Hi, I'm Sam, Sam Avila. I'm a DC-9 captain. I've been flying a DC-9 for approximately five years. I've been a captain for around two. I'm going to take you on a walk around on the DC-9. It's 1540 called the city of Davao. So if you follow me, we'll move right along. Start with the nose gear here. This is a shock strut audio type. These are called time tires. You see the tires have this little fairing on the side. It's used to deflect water away from the engine, especially when take off and landing. Here we have our bypass uh, lever. So, uh, we usually insert a bypass pin in this area so the maintenance people can actually tow the aircraft. Okay. An inter interesting part with the DC-9, you go in the background here. Okay, you see this little this spring, spring over here. This is called the ground shift. It's kind of dirty, man. This tells the airplane when it's on the ground or in the air. It controls uh, various systems like uh, pressurization, anti-skid, and uh, whatever. Also, this little baby here. This is called the uh, Ram Air Temperature Sensor. It's heated in the air, not on the ground. It's connected to the ground ship. It gives you an approximation of the uh, temperature in the air. It's heated when you're airborne to give uh, compensation for Ram Air rise. On the ground, it's not heated. It gives you more or less good uh, outside air temperature. This little green thing here is standard on most airplanes. Um, if this thing blows, you know more or less that your oxygen in the cockpit has gone into a thermal um, discharge. Maybe it got too hot or overpressure, stuff like that. Okay. To the back. It's a cargo door. If you notice, the DC-9s actually are a little very low. The cargo doors are very low, very easy to load the uh, baggages and stuff. You can actually do a quick turn around in approximately 35 minutes. You know. Okay, this looks like a wing. It is a wing. We got two wings. <laughs> Never mind. Main landing gear. Okay. See, it has the uh, gear pins installed. And it's parked. So the bungee springs. Here we have our brake wear indicators to tell us uh, how much brake pads we'll have. Stuff like that. On the back here. These are the torque. Well, the torque link dampers, they actually prevent the main gear shimmy when, uh, during uh, takeoff and landing. Okay. This wire here, if you see this wire, I don't know what is this is. No, just kidding. This is uh, actually the proximity switch. In the flight deck, it tells where the gears are down and locked. Okay. Let's go over here. Okay, let's go with the wing. Leading edge slats, anti-ice. They're anti-ice using engine bleed air. 13th stage. And these are our landing lights. These actually extend down. You know, it's like six inches. No speed limit for this. VMO, MMO, Mach 0.84. VMO, 250 knots. The motors are very powerful. They run very hot. After initial extension and retraction, we're given like uh, a minute and a half to pull them down and after every subsequent uh, extension and retraction, three and a half minutes, just so they won't overheat. Ailerons. Okay. DC-9 is not hydraulically powered with respect to the ailerons flight controls. The inboard ones are the um, control tabs, these are the trim tabs. When the pilot uses the yoke, left and right, it's actually the control tab that moves. Okay? The control tab goes up and the aileron goes down. The ailerons are bus connected, so if I push this up, the other aileron is supposed to move down. These are the trim tabs. Only wire cables, man. First generation fly-by-wire. <laughs> flaps. Go all the way down to flaps 50. Okay, here we have the engines, Pratt & Whitney JT8, these dash nines. 13 stages for the compressor, 4 stages for the turbine. The first 6 stages are the N1, connected to the last 3 stages of the turbine. And the N2, the, the next 7 stages connected to the first stage of the turbine. 14,500 pounds of thrust, okay. Be powerful. The 
first two stages are actually fans and they um, accelerate the air mass with the engine and aid in uh, engine cooling and what else do we have? Uh, generator cooling also and some noise suppression but they're still noisy <laughs> very noisy Well, the APU is not running right now, but you can see the exhaust up there, the APU, the round thing inside. There. And um, uh, yeah, the engine has uh, thrust reversers, bucket types, the open like clamshells, up and down. This is the steel kit bumper. And these are things dirty. This is a bumper mount and a shock strut. If ever you do over rotate and take off a landing, this shock, uh, shock shot will go up and this indicator will go down. And then afterwards, the maintenance has to uh, do a check on the structural. And you have to report to your chief pilot, tell him what happened, you know, and stuff like that. Rudder. Okay, the rudder of DC-9 is uh, hydraulically controlled normally, but there is manual rudder. We're not allowed to take off uh, with a manual rudder, especially if you have an engine failure. After V1, that would be pretty nasty. You know? My instructor got that me once in the simulator. That's not funny at all. No. <laughs> pretty hard, especially after a V1 cut. Then we have the horizontal stab. Okay, with the elevators. If you notice, the elevators are not really symmetrical. They're independent of each other. Okay? The right hand is connected to the co pilot's yoke and the left hand to the captain's yoke. What controls the uh, elevators are much like the ailerons. It's the tab that moves first, and the tab moves the whole elevator. Okay. The inboards are the control tabs, and the outboards are the gear tabs. The gear tabs move um, to uh, help the control tabs. You see, something like that. <laughs> However, if you do need a lot of uh, down elevator, we have elevator power, like what I showed you earlier in the aircraft. Um, in case you're approaching a really deep stall, so you get enough elevator authority to give a pitch down to avoid the stall. Like that. Hey, look, another engine. We have two. Yeah. Oh, yeah. In case you have to jettison the tail cone in case of an emergency, the ground crew can just reach over this. The little um, thing here, pull out the latch, the aircon falls off for evacuation. But you can also do it from inside the aircraft. Okay, these are the outflow valves for uh, pressurization. This is the butterfly valve, and these are the nozzle valves, okay? For uh, lots of airflow, and for just the right amount of airflow, you know, for fine tuning. Another wing, another landing gear, just like the other side. You can skip here, over here. And yeah, by the way, um, we have antennas on the bottom of the aircraft, or on the top. Usually the top antennas are for VHF-1 and COM-1, in this case of an emergency. You know, VHF and COM-1, it's the range on top. Oh yeah, I forgot! You see that little tube in the tail? On the vertical stab? See that? That's a 50 caliber machine gun. Nah, just kidding. <laughs> That's a pitot tube for the rudder. The rudder is actually restricted. The faster you go, the less movement of the rudder you have. Just to avoid damage to the tail. And that's the scoop for the air conditioning, right below it. The static ports here. And over here, these are the cabin safety pressure outflow valves. In case cabin differential pressure goes above 8.06 psi, these babies open to relieve pressure. We also have negative pressure relief valves situated at the aft bulkhead. Also, the door seals also act as uh, negative pressure relief valves. That's about it. The 360. Should be on a reshot. Level 479 on bail. Clear to push and start shot at 25. Clear to push and start shot at 25. Level 479.
Departure 1211, good evening. Good evening. RPC 2079, descent 6000. Down to 6000, 2079. Departure Cebu 479, airborne 24 runway heading. Cebu 479, identify the departure. Yeah. And there runway heading, climb 190 until advice. Yeah. We're on heading in 190 until further advice, Cebu 479. Air France 166 turn left heading 330. Heading 330, Air France 166. RPC 3216, maintain present speed. You will be number 3 in approach sequence to follow 737. Roger, number 3. RPC 2079, number 4. 359, departed Naga and this time uh, 39 uh, miles to Manila out of uh, 6,500. Adequate special vehicle direct Manila, 1,500 within the control zone. 2079, 5,000, heading to the VOR. Roger, uh, clear the traffic, 2079, maintain 5,000. RPC-1359, request time of aircraft. Charlie-172, sir. Say again. Charlie-172. Sir, RPC-1359, request time of Four seven nine, Roger. 